This is the print I'm going to use for the encaustic process. I've printed it on a smooth um, acid-free paper and I've already uh, enhanced the highlights and, and some of the colors a little bit with colored pencil. On the reverse side, I have marked with um, pencil where the corners are so I'll be able to um, know where the print is from behind. I have a board here um, that's um, already been um, gessoed and I've taped it um, so that the um, wood will stay clean um, during the whole encaustic process. And um, we can um, paint it later or just leave the wood shine through. I haven't decided what I want to do at this point. So the next thing um, I'm going to do is I'm going to take matte medium and um, I've already poured some of it into this cup and I'm going to take, I think I've covered that pretty well. Next, I'm going to take my print. I have some um, kind of wax paper here set up. Put it right where the corners are marked with pencil so that there are no air pockets. I should have also told you that um, after I um, printed this, this is um, printed with um, ar archival pigment prints on a Canon printer. I um, I also sprayed it with a, a fixative um, so that the um, wax will not um, mix with any of the um, pigment and that I don't have to worry about that um, lifting up. Okay. So I've taken some care to go along the edges and make sure that the edges are really in there. You can see how it's printed a little bit larger than the board here. You can see where the edges are. Now, um, I've only learned how to do this during the pandemic um, period. Um, sometimes it comes out really well. Sometimes it flops. Um, so I'm not really teaching you how to do it. I'm just showing you what I do. Hopefully this one will work. If you want to learn how to um, work with encaustics or um, use encaustic wax on your um, photographs and um, the place to go is to the A. Smith Gallery in Johnson City and talk to Amanda Smith and Kevin Tully. They have um, classes they teach online. Um, hopefully soon again they'll have classes in person um, but they can get you set up and um, they will help you with any questions you have after class for sure. So I'm going to turn this over onto the um, wax paper and I have a ton of books here that I'm just going to pile up on top and, and let it set up overnight uh, and get it ready for the next step.
edges are trimmed off now. And I'm going to go around the um, edges, the raw edges, with a black magic marker. So you can see I've gone around the edges with a little black magic marker. And that um, kind of hides the rough edges that may have been left by the cut paper. Now I'm going to do the same treatment on these other two images and then we'll be ready to apply the encaustic wax. So I've had my um, wax melting on the griddle um, this morning. I have it nice and hot. Uh, the temperature is set at 250 and um, I just have a pan on the griddle and I have uh, a large brush. Um, this is a three inch brush that I'll be applying the wax with and then I have a smaller brush if I need it as well sitting in the wax and um, ready to apply the wax to the um, images. Keep the brush reasonably dry and I go pretty quickly. I go in one direction and then I go. my heat gun. We'll fuse the wax into the paper. Right. Let it get a little liquid again. Get a nice sheen on it. And just keep moving. So that's just one coat and I'm going to then um, continue to coat. I'll coat in, you can see the brush strokes going this way. I'm going to go the other way next time and then I'm going to um, let it set up and take a look at it and see what I want to do next. I have um, scrapers and different tools to add texture. Uh, I like um, having the texture in the wax. and. Um, and see what evolves with it. This one has um, two coats of wax now. I haven't put it on very thick. Uh, I like seeing the brush strokes. I don't know if you can see that through the video. Um, there are some areas that um, I haven't put it on quite evenly. You can see especially on the edges I'm kind of bad at getting it even. So what I like to do is take my scraper tool and I'll just kind of scrape on the edges here and um, even it out a little bit. And then when I get the excess wax off, I can just throw that excess, excess wax back in the hot wax to basically recycle it. And then I'll put another coat of wax on this again. Um, a lot of people do, um, um, very interesting designs on um, with their encaustic. I basically like to have a, just as an alternative way of presenting my images, uh, it, rather than having them matted and framed, um, this gives it a nice protective coating. It gives it a little extra texture. I like um, putting some added texture onto it, especially um, doing something um, with this feel that can do some kind of a grassy texture on it um, and then you can just put it on the shelf or you can put it into um, a, an open frame. 
um, that it can it can sit in as well. But it will stand on its own. It could be mounted on a wall um, without a frame. So it, it's a little more versatile. This is another way to present my images. So I, I enjoy doing it. So all three of these images have had um, three coats of wax now. Um, they need to um, just rest for a while, um, a couple of days. Um, they'll become more transparent. The wax will become more transparent. And then I'll see if they need another coat or what else needs to be done with them. Um, I have different treatments I can do, different um, waxes I could put over or treatments or even color if I want to. So I'll see when I look at them what they might need. They should be ready uh, in time for the um, Austin Studio Tour. So come on by and see how they turned out. Thank you.